Hi, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering the calcium blood test. And in this video, we're going to be covering three important things. Firstly, why calcium is an important test. Secondly, why the test is done. And thirdly, and most importantly, what the result might mean. But before we get into the main section of the video, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for weekly medical education videos. So first of all, what's being tested? Well, calcium is one of the most important minerals in the body, and it's necessary for proper functioning of the muscles, nerves, heart, as well as having a role in blood clotting and bone formation. About 99% of calcium is bound up in the bones, whilst the rest of the calcium circulates in the blood. And in the blood, roughly half of the calcium is ionized or free, and it's active. The remaining half is bound to proteins such as albumin or it's complexed with other compounds such as phosphate and bicarbonate which is inactive. Most commonly labs report a value for adjusted calcium, this is also known as the corrected calcium. Now this is the measured calcium value adjusted for the albumin concentration. This is because abnormally high or low albumin concentrations can alter the total calcium concentration. Now, as a separate side note, urinary calcium is used to indicate how much calcium is being excreted by the kidneys. Well, so now that we know a little bit more about calcium, well, why is it requested as part of an investigation? Well, essentially in this video, let's think of two broad uses of calcium as a test. So firstly, diagnostic and secondly, monitoring. And I'll cover both of these with you in a very brief, succinct form here. So as a diagnostic test, calcium can be used if individuals have got symptoms that suggest things like kidney stones, bone disease, or nerve-related disorders. Doctors might also request a calcium test if people might have kidney disease, and that's because low calcium is common in those with kidney failure, as well as symptoms as of excessive calcium. Now this is known as hypercalcemia. These symptoms might include thirst, frequent or excessive urination, constipation, tiredness, weakness, loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting. Now on the other hand someone might have low calcium symptoms known as hypocalcemia. These are things such as muscle cramps, tingling finger fingers or numbness around the mouth or convul convulsions. Other diseases that can be associated with abnormal blood calcium can be things like thyroid disease, cancer or poor nutrition. Now if calcium levels do fall slowly over time, some people may not have any symptoms at all. Now the other side of requesting the test might be as part of a monitoring test. Now patients with certain kinds of cancer, particularly breast, lung, head and neck, kidney and multiple myeloma, as well as kidney disease or transplant may need calcium monitoring as part of the regular lab tests. Additionally, people who receive calcium or vitamin D supplements may also need to have the calcium concentrations monitored. Now, urinary calcium may be requested if individuals have got symptoms of kidney stones. And these are things like sharp pain in the sides or backs that are around the kidneys, as well as pain progressing into the lower abdomen or blood in the urine. So now let's go on and discuss what the result might mean. Well, first of all, let's talk about normal blood calcium. So normal blood calcium results with other lab results will suggest that there's usually no problems with calcium metabolism. On the other hand, a high calcium level is called hypercalcemia. And two of the main causes are something called hyperparathyroidism. So that's increases in parathyroid gland function, this condition is usually caused by a benign, so meaning non-cancerous tumour of the parathyroid gland. This form of hypercalcemia is usually mild and can be present for many years before being noticed. The second main cause is cancer. So cancer can cause hypercalcemia when it spreads to the bones, which raises calcium into the blood, or when cancer causes a hormone similar to parathyroid hormone to increase calcium levels. But there are lots of other potential causes of raised calcium, such as hyperthyroidism, sarcoidosis, TB, lithium treatment, prolonged immobilization, acute kidney injury, as well as excess vitamin D intake. Now on the other hand, a low calcium result is known as hypocalcemia, which we've already discussed. The most common cause is a low protein concentration, especially of albumin, and that can be a result of liver disease or malnutrition. Some other causes of low calcium include decreased vitamin D concentration, decreased dietary intake of calcium, 
an underactive parathyroid gland, so that's known as hypoparathyroidism, as well as magnesium deficiencies, acute inflammation of the pancreas, so things like pancreatitis, as well as chronic kidney disease and bone disease such as osteomalacia in adults and rickets in children. Now finally, urinary calcium concentrations may be affected by the same conditions and diseases as we've talked about. High amounts of calcium in the urine, so that's known as hypercalciuria, may lead to the formation of crystals or stones in the kidney. So I hope the video was helpful and informative. If you did find it useful, please remember to like it. Give me a comment in the comments section below if you've got any questions. I do try to reply to all comments where possible. However, please remember that this is an education platform and I can't give individual medical advice out. If you've got queries about your own blood results, please get in contact with your own doctor. I've also included useful extra reading links in the description box if you've got time or further reading that you wish to do. Please check those out. Thanks for watching the video. Until next time, I hope you learned something new. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave me a comment, and until next time, bye.